What's going on guys? I'm back with another video. This video is not going to be about bearded dragons, but um, I do have a couple of all pythons and that's part of my collection. So I'm going to start doing videos on those as well. Right now I only have three. I actually have five. Two of them are um, in process of being over here. Uh, I'll show you guys once I get those other two. But right now I have three and I just took them all out to soak them. Um, I've been dealing with a mic problem. This is my second time treating it. I also had to clean up this water bowl. But right now they're staying on paper towels so that I can get rid of this process. I mean these uh, mites. So if you have a mic problem, this is some of the stuff that you want to do. If you have any loose substrate like I had, I had uh, cocoa blocks. You want to take all the cocoa block out. Um, sanitize the cage. Take the bin all the way out. You want to clean around there too, top and bottom sides and everything inside of the um, rack system. That one has something in it. This one is already clean, but I just want to show you guys the process. So you're going to clean the bin out. You're also going to clean the bin surrounds out. Um, I use, I'll show you what I use to clean. But you're going to soak the, you're going to take everything out. If you have any, like, uh, I have these as well. I had those in there with them. These half logs. And what I did is put them in the frig um, refrigerator. Um, they've been in there for about, uh, since I did the first treatment, so about two weeks ago. And you're going to want to redo this process about three times before you clear. Um, the first treatment I did seemed like it got most of them. But I have a pie ball, by th ball python, and like I can see little pink spots on the white. So I know that he still has some on it on him. So um, this is going to be the second treatment. And again, like I said, you start off by with the with the housing. So you're going to take everything out of there. If you have loose substrate, um, take that out. Once you when you put something else in there, use paper towels or newspaper or something like that. If you have butcher block paper, that works as well. But you want something that the mites can't hide inside of. So put the I'm using paper towels. Um, like I said, I got to clean this water bowl out. She just took a big dump in there. Um, so what you're going to have after that is clean water bowl and leave it. I left the, um, the half log out of there and just paper towels. That's what I'm going to do until I see no more mites. Um, clean water. Keep the water clean. And like I said, once you take that out, spray it down with your disinfectant. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the disinfectant that I use. And not only clean the bin, but clean the inside of the rack system as well. So, um, like I said, I got three snakes. One of those bins is not in use. I usually just swap them, swap them out, and then clean it out. But right now, I'm soaking them all, and I'm going to show you the pink spots that I'm talking about on the on the uh, pie ball. So at first, when you soak them, you're going to soak them in pure, just just water, nothing added to it. You're going to do that for 30 minutes to an hour. Let me see. My pie bud, he has a couple of spots that are pink on them. And like you can see right there. And that's from when the mites have been biting them. So you actually can see one right there. So you're going to let them soak. It's pretty much a drowner in the mice off of them. Um, but the reason you don't want to put any chemicals or anything in there right away because they're going to probably drink the water. So I'll leave them there 30 minutes to an hour before I add anything. And what I use is Dawn dish soap. Um, it's not going to harm their skin or anything like that. But it's going to kill the mites. So I have the Dawn dish soap up there. I'm going to add that after 30 minutes to an hour of them soaking. And then, then I let them soak for additional 20 to 30 minutes. And then I'll replace them back into the clean, clean habitats. And then, like I said, you're going to want to repeat that process like two or three times until you see no signs of mites again. So right now I'm just going to clean this cage and let me get the disinfectant for you guys and show you. This is the disinfectant that I use. It's called Biosecurity. It's for stalls, coops, and kennels, buckets, bu buckets and bowls, wash racks, trailers, bits, 
bits and tag and breeding boarding facilities. It's a concentrated thing. So what I do is take like a half a cap, less than half a cap and put it in here. And then I fill this up and I use it as a spray and I spray it in there. Um, diluted with water. So it's very strong. It's not like a mite treatment or anything like that. The best way to get rid of mites is to continuously clean. And I only have a small collection, so um, or else I'll be using like preventamite and stuff like that. But since so I have only four, four, four um, ball pythons, and I got two hog nose snakes as well. I showed you guys those in a previous video, but since I only got four ball pythons that have mites, the hog nose don't have any. They're in a separate room. Um. So again, from what you, first thing you're gonna do is clean. Clean the container. If you have anything that's like wood, like those half logs that I have, you're going to want to um, either bake it or make it cold to kill the mites off. I had those in there for, like I said, for like two weeks now. And um, I left the tank as bare as possible. And once I see the mites are gone, I'm going to go back to the cocoa blocks. I, I use, I have cocoa blocks right there. and have some that's already mixed right there. They just need some water added to it. But, yeah, that's all you have to do to get rid of them. Um, and you got to stay consistent. Consistency is always the best. So if you do this treatment one time and then you do it like three months later, you probably got the same problem you had originally because the eggs have hatched, the ones that you missed, and it just started the process all over. So probably do it every, every two or three weeks um, until you don't see any evidence. And if you have a ball python, that's a pie bolt. Um, you're gonna be able to see from those little pink spots that I just showed you on mines. And um, like I said, soak them. Soak them for about 30 minutes to an hour. Then after the 30 minutes to hours have passed, you should add some Dawn dish soap. The Dawn dish soap is gonna kill any of the other mites that hasn't um, drowned already. And that's it. So right now I'm not gonna show this part, but I'm pretty much gonna take all this out, spray this, spray this down, clean the water bowl, fill the water bowl up, put new paper towel down. So what you're gonna have at the end of the day is a tank that looks like this, pretty bare. But these are big containers. I have mine in pretty big containers. That's my hand for reference. And it has heat tape on the back. But that's what you're going to pretty much have. And like I said, make sure you clean the surrounds as well. Spray it down with your chemical cleaner. And then wipe it down. And then once you're done, you place the snakes after they have done a little full set process. Um, so I got that one and that one left to do. And then we'll be complete. But like I just put them in the water right now. So they'll be in there for a little while. And while I do that, I'm going to be cleaning um, bitter dragons and feeding them. Um, the next video that I show is going to be um, these baby bitter dragons eating. I haven't showed the, the baby bitter dragons eating in a while. Uh, these guys are 100% head whiplets. And this is that newest clutch that I showed you guys yesterday. Um, I'm going to see if they're trying to eat already. And also got... Um, it was two eggs left in a video from yesterday. One of the eggs hatched, and the other one, like I thought, might have happened. It might have did. So I'm gonna might have might have died in the egg. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna open that egg on this video. So stay tuned for that. And I'm also gonna be feeding these guys. So if you want to see that, stick around. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Um, this is actually the father to the to these guys. Genetic hypotrans genetic strike. His name is uh, Rally. No, not Rally. Um, Hellcat. All the ones that I with the genetic stripes that I kept, I named them after some type of uh, some type of um, muscle car. But all right, guys, just a second. Um, you must see a roach or something. You're trying to get to. Let's go check out the last baby that has. 
I looked at it previously, it's a little hypo. Got this container right here so I can just rinse it off real fast. I like to rinse them off to get the little substrate off of them. And this is the egg that the baby didn't come out of. Give me a second to cut it open and I'll get back on the camera. Alright, it's cut open. Um, all that right there is yolk. Most likely, most times when I see stuff like this, the baby either has a kink or something like that and it, has, it prevented it from um, absorbing the the yolk, which you see right there. I don't even see a baby in here. Nothing but yolk. So maybe it was just an infertile egg the whole time. Yeah, that's most likely what it was. Just an infertile egg. Baby never developed. Yeah, I don't see nothing. But a lot of times, like I said, when that happens, is um, like an egg will look like it's gonna get ready to hatch, like it'll sweat, and um, sometimes it's the first egg, and then all other eggs hatch, and that one's left. And um, when you open it up, it's like a baby that's not full, something wrong with it. Something happened during development, and um, the egg yolk is in there, and either have a cleft palate or some type of kink or something like that. But yeah, that's the last one. So the total of uh, ten eggs, actually eleven eggs. One was um, infertile. No, it was twelve eggs. Two were infertile, like definitely infertile. And I think she popped one, and, um, and then I put ten in here. We got nine babies. One egg, one didn't develop right, but. Like I said, I'm going to get this guy rinsed off. I'm going to do some lukewarm water. Nice little hypo. Hypo. 100% had Wiblet, 100% had Trans. And that's the, right there if you can see it, that little ball, that's the umbilicus that is remaining. It is probably just fell off. Still sticking to them though. Let's see. It's good thing strong. <laughs> but yeah, that's the was left of the umbilicus fell off. And we'll see a little orange hypo. Orange hypo, 100% had wibbly, 100% had trans. Trying to get the camera to focus. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show the feeding video in the next video, so this video won't be too long, but make sure you guys tune in. Like I said, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, and I'm going to do the feeding video in the next video, so make sure you guys are subscribed and tune in. Alright, I'm out. Peace.